This is an NBC News special report. Here's Lester Holt. Good evening, everyone. We are coming on the air with breaking news. Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg has died. Ginsburg, who was 87, was the court's oldest justice and served more than a quarter century. Appointed by Bill Clinton in 1993, just the second woman after Sandra Day O'Connor to serve on the nation's highest court. Ginsburg became an iconic figure in American life, a tireless advocate for women's rights and a reliable anchor to the court's liberal wing. Her death coming after multiple health problems in recent years will now certainly trigger an epic struggle over a replacement with the ideological makeup of the court itself in the balance all during an election year. Justice correspondent Pete Williams looks back on a remarkable life. Ruth Bader Ginsburg was consistently one of the U.S. Supreme Court's moderate to liberal members. First as a lawyer, then a judge and a justice, she believed the Constitution guaranteed women greater rights. Over the course of now over two centuries, it has grown and developed so that more and more people are included in that concept, we the people. Rejected after law school for a Supreme Court clerkship because she was a woman, she began her legal career as a law professor and pioneering advocate for women's legal rights, successfully arguing a string of cases before the Supreme Court that made it easier to sue for sex discrimination. It was President Carter who first appointed her to be a federal judge. She has genuinely distinguished herself. Then in 1993, President Clinton put her on the Supreme Court, making her the second woman justice. It contributes to the end of the days when women, at least half the talent pool in our society, appear in high places only as one at a time performers. At her confirmation hearing, she clearly stated her support for the right to abortion. This is something central to a woman's life, to her dignity. And as a justice, she voted to uphold abortion rights. She wrote the court's opinion, putting an end to the men-only policy at VMI, the Virginia Military Institute, saying it was based on outmoded stereotypes. She joined the court's majorities in striking down the death penalty for juveniles and in ruling that, quote, death is not a suitable punishment for a mentally retarded criminal. She also voted to roll back Bush administration policies in the war on terror. A blistering opinion in a case about equal pay for women renewed her standing as a feminist icon. We welcome today Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. She was nicknamed Notorious RBG, a play on a rapper's name, and featured in a documentary movie. I am 84 years old and everyone wants to take a picture with me. <laughs> she married a fellow student in college, Martin Ginsburg. They had two children. Years later, she recalled receiving some practical advice on her wedding day. It pays, Mother said. It pays sometimes to be a little deaf. <laughs> I have followed that advice with only occasional lapses. Not only at home, but in the places I have worked and even in relating to my colleagues at the Supreme Court. A passionate opera fan, she appeared in several Washington productions in full costume but in silent roles. Regular checkups and early intervention helped her recover from three surgeries for colon, pancreatic, and lung cancer. And doctors inserted a stent after discovering blockage in a heart artery. She missed surprisingly few days on the bench. But now the court's most powerful liberal justice is gone. Pete Williams, NBC News at the Supreme Court. And again, Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg dead tonight at age 87. Let's go live now to Pete Williams in our Washington newsroom. Pete, what more can you tell us? Well, this is a time, obviously, for looking back at her career. But, Lester, we can't help but look forward, too, to what happens now with the Supreme Court term uh, ready to start in just two weeks, the first Monday in October, the usual start for the Supreme Court term, uh, what will happen now that there's a vacancy? Uh, President Trump has said that he would uh, nominate a successor, and Mitch McConnell, the Republican leader of the Senate, has said that they would try to uh, act on a confirmation for a successor. Uh, the question is, I guess, two questions. One is, can the Congress do this in time? 
while uh, before before the election. Who knows what's going to happen? And secondly, assuming that President Trump does uh, nominate someone and the Senate tries to act on it, does the Senate have the votes? Remember how close it was with Brett Kavanaugh. Uh, they may or may not have the votes of some of the people who were on the edge. Lester? We are entering an interesting time, to say the least. Pete Williams, again, the death of Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. As we are in the shadow and the final countdown to a presidential election, there's going to be a lot to talk about, a lot to cover. We'll, of course, be all over it. In the meantime, uh, we'll be on with further updates as warranted. But I'm Lester Holt, NBC News, New York. Good evening. Hey, NBC News viewers. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.